What time is it there? What, what is, time? What, yeah, what time is it over there for you? At uh, six p.m. London time. Okay, that's not too bad. We take these calls with this gentleman at a company. I will remain nameless at this moment, and he's calling in at like two a.m. for calls, and he just seems like it's like midday. He's not even tired, which tells me we may be working with vampires. So everybody, oh, keep an eye out. yeah, or with AI. With, or with, AI. With, I mean, aren't AI. they the same thing, right? There's, they suck the life out of the uh, data ecosystem to deceive us. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I tell uh, you. I tell you. I tell you. All right. There we go. All right. And is your last name Basia? Uh, well... If you like to pronounce it like this, yes. Well, how, how do you say it? Well, okay, so I'm Polish. So in, in Polish, it's pronounced bacha. Bacha. Uh, which is kind of, kind of Italian. Uh, I, I'll take it. I, I don't have any Italian ancestry, but, you know, it's, it's not the worst thing, right? That people can accuse you. Bacha. Yeah. It sounds like a cool new Starbucks drink coming out this holiday. <laughs> the the, the venti it sound like matcha because it sounds like matcha <laughs> you're like <laughs> come on you're more original than that Jeez. i'm trying here you know gotta gotta shake off some cobwebs here but uh yeah well, i don't really have much of a role here than being the peanut gallery so i'm just <laughs> hey you're, uh, the, you're the hype man hey that, it's literally like today you're the hype man normally i i think the last one i was the hype man but um you're a great yeah. hype man buddy well, you know, I'm working on it. I'm actually taking a course online on how to do it. It's a, <laughs> uh, it's a webinar like this, but called the Hype Graph. <laughs> I'll be here all day, guys. Hey, well, at least for the next hour. Yeah, next hour. Let the puns flow. <laughs> oh, man, the puns Welcome. flow when uh, you, you put a camera on me, but uh, not during the work day. But, That's right. Uh, yeah, no, work day is serious day. You know, because crypto is serious. Yeah, Everything. I mean, it's it's gotten to be the most serious space in the world. It's like man, I'll tell you what, these ETF moves that are happening at some of these motherships is uh woo, 2024 is gonna be spicy. Let's just say that. I'll I'll keep my mouth shut, but uh we can go yeah. ahead and jump in, buddy. I'll I'll shut up. Yeah, how are we doing? How many how many people we have in here at this point so I can gone about a few minutes give it another minute let people drag in learn how to get on to the interwebs <clears throat> video you know james james gives uh one of our protocol developers uh james actually does a uh lectures a course at rice university on blockchain pretty cool actually Does anybody know how, how we're doing on numbers? I can't see anything. 80, 85 looks like. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll kick it off. It is Hypergraph 53, right? Like that was the one thing I didn't know if we were doing 53. It's like, Michael, yeah. we've done 53 of these things and they started out as like a random coffee talk. We called it a coffee talk and it was basically one of our, our our co-founders we'd just sit and talk about the impact of the technology and it like latched on to people and now it became like a branded thing you know like everything it evolves from like this boot bootstrap scrappy thing to now like people had expectations they're like you need to wear a yeah. suit when you do this <laughs> yeah that's that's what joe rogan said when he started you know oh yeah uh he he did a little better on his uh on his podcast than we did but uh but you're, you're not done yet right so... you're not done yet no no and i've i've got some interesting characters in my back pocket to introduce well let's kick it off today uh if you don't know what the hypergraph hour is some days i don't know what it what it is but uh really an introduction to our our ecosystem talking about partnerships technology updates um, anything that we have like to show slide where we we use uh, the means of Zoom and video to kind of showcase things. I will say in the future, we 
we're going to start exploring with doing more stuff on on Twitter Spaces. Um, they've got some video components. We're going to try switching it over there. Um, but for today, um, I'm uh, happy to be joined by Alex Brandes, our our newly minted CTO. Um, you can get his NFT somewhere. I don't know. It's somewhere around there. There's only one. He probably has it. And Michael Bacha. I get yes, it? Ah, very, very well. Very with, yeah. with 3A DAO. Um, and we're going to, and Michael's going to do a lot of talking today, introducing 3A DAO and how it's interwoven um, with uh, something that we're launching today on Lattice. Uh, also kind of a, a joint partnership and um, that we're going to kind of highlight. <clears throat> but before doing so, I just wanted to uh, kind of go through the, the quick agenda. We are going to do a little recap of Constellation. Last couple of weeks um, have been really extraordinary for us, really what our, our journey started five years ago and took us all the way to uh, today. Uh, or the past couple of weeks in launching Metagraphs. And we just kind of wanted to share some early stats around how Metagraphs are doing. Uh, we're going to give a, a, a Lattice update as well. It's been a long time since we've talked about Lattice, uh, but we want to still, you know, really emphasize the importance of Lattice and the role it plays in, in our ecosystem. Then talking with Michael on the 3A DAO, uh, kind of exploring the future of DeFi, and what they plan to introduce into our ecosystem. Uh, and then a summary with a few other announcements for next steps. So I'll kick it off today. Um, we had a really great Constellation Metagraph launch. Um, I was really proud of the team. A lot came together. Um, I don't think people realize how much stuff went on behind the scenes to make this happen. Uh, and maybe kind of how we differentiate ourselves from other ecosystems is that we're not always very loud like other ecosystems. Uh, and it's partially because of the workload that we have behind uh, the scenes is that not only are we just building the protocol, but we're building the whole vertical stack. Uh, so building the protocol with the tessellation upgrade, offering hypergraph support to the DAG Explorer, which we also support internally uh, to the, the first application layer, uh, the layer one, uh, door metagraph that launched <clears throat> a sub network that's built on top of the hypergraph but also what came with that was iOS and Android support for the door application to manage your DTM uh, we also launched the door metagraph explorer so that people could see transactions much like a block explorer occur on the door metagraph uh, and then we had a sign up for uh, to be a, a, a door validator node, which we're starting to see people accumulate a million door tokens, which then will be invited into uh, supporting the door metagraph as we look to expand the uh, current three nodes into many, many more nodes over the coming in, in the near recent months. Uh, but then also to, to kick off the metagraph launch, we also had to have Stargazer wallet uh, support and upgrade. So we had to be able to support metagraph tokens as well. Uh, we also launched the feature of kind of visualizing your NFT collection as well. So there's a lot of moving pieces. Um, and then getting then the final push is uh, with any project that they have to do is get the token listed. Um, so in the course of one week, we were able to launch the door token on Bit4X, which has become a really amazing exchange to work with. Um, I think they they have kind of the essence of the future of exchange uh, centralized exchanges, the right appetite, the right professionalism. They were excited to be a first mover to support Metagraph tokens. Uh, we've worked out as, uh, a pretty good partnership with them as well, um, that if you're building a Metagraph token or minting on Constellation, we have a, a fast track into Bit4x um, and, a and a secure listing fee. Um, other thing that we have coming down the line are uh, uh, more utility coming to the door token. Um, so this was the first push that we we did in getting the Metagraph launch. First utility of the currency was to be a node operator, uh, but we have many, many more things coming down the pipeline on ways to use door uh, in a very scalable way that will create a really nice budding ecosystem. Um, and some of the numbers online 
some of the numbers that we're seeing right now from a statistics, uh, we're seeing about 450 50 DTMs online right now. It's amazing to people. For me, it's amazing to, for people, for me to see people actually peel and stick, put this device up um, and connect it to a, a blockchain. Like um, I, I actually never thought we'd see something so simple and so easy with very few customer support tickets on our side. Our customer support team has been excellent in, in kind of managing um, all the support tickets, making sure all these DTMs got online. And it was an instant light switch that happened, which was really, really cool to see. I think even when I was talking to Alex on Slack, I was like, Hey, are you sure there's nothing I need to do? Or, you know, he's like, no, it's going to automatically go from integration net to, to main net. And it was perfectly done. We had no network re downtime from the hypergraph side of things. So it was really, really great launch. Um, we've already seen about 190,000 transactions. We've distributed about 400,000 door commissions to uh, uh, datapreneurs. So that's door token being given out for collecting data. Uh, we've also done about 150,000 snapshots to Hypergraph. Uh, I think Fireflight really uh, had a nice little post where he showed kind of our network utility um, on the day that the, the launch of the Metagraph happened. Uh, and we're also seeing about 270,000 uh, data points from updates on the DTM. Uh, and currently right now, and something that we want the community to manage uh, is that we... Uh, you know, have 6 million door locked up that support the Metagraph node and 750,000 DAG locked up that support the Hypergraph node that supports the Metagraph. Uh, and as, as you know, with the sign up, there will be, we'll be further extending this out to, uh, to more node operators to join the network, validate snapshots, especially as we start, you know, really seeing uh, more DTMs sell. So I'm really proud of this company for what they're able to execute and showing kind of vertical integration, multiple development teams uh, executing in parallel and in stride. It was just really awesome. And I, I really want our community to be proud of, of the vision that we've set forth on being a blockchain that has customization that allows for data collection, incentivization, and monetization, and being able to put a full flywheel together uh, in a very nice, seamless, one-week uh, expedition that took us about five years to get here. So um, really amazing work, guys. And uh, I just love this company, and I love the community for being able to see through the light on what we're doing. Hey, Jorgis, I just want to add on to that real quick. Um, yeah, I couldn't be more proud as well. Just a huge shout out to Alex, um, you know, stepping into our CTO role this year and really proving his value time and time again. And he had already proven his value before this went off. Um, but a term that you're going to hear me use and others use a lot is incentive design, right? We talk about security by design when we think about the network. And then when we start adding metagraphs on top, one of the things that makes Constellation so special is just that true incentive, uh, incentive design. And it's sort of a closed loop. If you think about, you've got the data providers, which are the, the door um, hardware owners, people that buy the, the, the devices. You have the node validators. And then you have the brokers, the people that are buying this data as advanced retail analytics and other modalities on the other side. And right in the smack dab middle, you have you know, proof of foot traffic. And that brings to life this really amazing datapreneur concept where you're attracting rewards for contributing data to a value pool that extends in areas that you may not even be aware of. And so I just encourage people to really earmark this idea uh, in the back of their heads and how this use case can apply to just so many data-driven sensor technologies as well as non-sensor technologies that's gonna bring not only security by design, but truly that incentive design to fruition. And I just couldn't be more proud of this, this, uh, this whole thing. So I just wanna add a few sentences there and I'll hand it right back to you, uh, Mr. Jorgensen. Thanks, Diggles. <laughs> yeah, Alex, uh, amazing job of, of, of executing on this. I, I think it really took a lot of leadership to push all this out the door. No nope, pun intended. Yes. Ah, pun <laughs> The door puns are too easy. Yeah, you can <laughs> you can yeah. go all day on those. Um, but yeah, it's it's great to see uh, you know a fairly successful rollout with this. Um, we're starting to see the first DTM lights come online, which is super exciting. Brand new new product, um, and then we've got uh, a lot of stuff in the pipeline that's going to start rolling out to support uh, datapreneurs in getting those devices out to commercial locations, 
um, getting you know retailers signed up for um, the retail analytics uh, platform and and getting some um, sort of profit sharing from that as well as uh, additional you know, commissions. So um, yeah, great great to see it roll out and, and we've got a lot more coming that will kind of expand on what we've already uh, released. Thanks, Alex. And so to to kick off the the uh, the conversation today, we wanted to kind of. Uh, Rehighlight Lattice. Uh, you sometimes don't hear us talk about it much, and there's a lot of Lattice that's really, uh, really built for the bull market. When when companies are wanting to get discovered, their cryptocurrencies looking to get discovered. But a year ago, we we set a framework around Lattice being the gateway to the constellation ecosystem, and I want to reemphasize the role that Lattice plays. Um, as a DeFi hub. Many of you know that we haven't been able to explore the DEX without the various tooling and Metagraph support for Lattice, um, but yet it still plays a, a essential role in connecting projects that are building on Constellation, that are building Metagraphs uh, to come in and get community adoption at different stages in their token life cycle. And so it's many ways it's while there's a lot of projects going on or a lot of products going on uh, on the lattice gateway, it acts as as a, a way for people to uh, enhance their discoverability at their different stages in their token life cycle. Um, launchpad, uh, we've had several projects go through the launchpad. Um, it was launched, uh, you know, kind of late into the bull market. And so we've kind of been, you know, a little more slowly rolling out projects um, onto the launchpad just because of the appetite of, of backing crypto projects and kind of lessening the burden uh, of people coming in and, and getting involved at that early first stage that it's looking for, um, uh, you know, money or backing to help get centralized exchange listing, get early DEX support, get early awareness. Uh, and then our second product, which is the liquidity pools, which we're going to highlight more as uh, 3A DAO will be the next project on, on the liquidity pools, but um, actively getting more liquidity into your DEX uh, and incentivizing DEX liquidity and Lattice being a, a portal for you to add DEX liquidity in an easy way. Uh, the other key component of Lattice is really around the node management. Um, so we've we've kicked off providing bounties and commissions from Door, um, as well as we did uh, uh, soft staking with DAG, uh, and we call this the node management. But really, this is kind of a bounty and commission portal where we can do active distributions for it um, uh, for people in our community in in a non-terminal capacity. Um, and then swapping. So our early phases of exploring the business viability of swapping uh, was implementing Exelix as a, a centralized exchange aggregate uh, to enable seamless swapping. And we've seen some really good uh, uh, activity there of which we've uh, accrued some rewards and been able to distribute that out through the node management side of things. Uh, but next, that's that's really on the horizon, is building the Ethereum uh, Ethereum bridge, uh, so wrap DAG <clears throat> into Ethereum to act as that first uh, stepping stone into the process of building a DEX, which will uh, then kind of highlight lending aspects that we're starting to explore also with 3A DAO. Um, so setting the tone a little bit, Lattice is is very much an essential piece into. Uh, the discoverability and providing the tools and resources for Metagraphs to find um, community, get early liquidity in different capacities, and really help to connect projects um, in the Constellation ecosystem together. Uh, and over the over the past year, we've seen about um, eight million dollar eight million dollars, or about two hundred and ten uh, million DAG in total rewards distributed through the portal. Uh, we have about $3 million worth of uh, value locked up in VELTX today. Um, and we have about, we've done about 1.4 million transactions in uh, rewards that were distributed. And we've also seen an uptick in governance. So I'm really proud that the Lattice governance has really started to uh, put together different proposals that we've been able to take back internally at the core team. Uh, and implement some of those changes. 
So Alex, I'll kind of take it over and kind of the next steps and elaborating a little bit more on, on kind of the swapping and path to swaps. Yeah, so I um, wanted to give an update on sort of how we're thinking about um, L0 tokens and their role in this broader um, Metagraph ecosystem. And then um, a little bit about our development efforts in that context. So, um, you know, first we have, you know, Dora is the first uh, Metagraph on uh, on mainnet. So um, we had, you know, a centralized exchange port through uh, Bit4x. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're doing, not just with the centralized exchange uh, support, but in general with Door is um, uh, having Door be a first mover to um, open up opportunities for, you know, the metagraphs and the L0 tokens uh, that that follow. So, um, you know, with, with Bit4x, they now support the metagraph token standard. Um, and so that means that any future uh, project that is uh, implementing an L0 token uh, will have a much easier time being listed. So you know, this, if you think about um, you know, how easy it is for an ERC-20 token to be listed on, on major exchanges, that's because you know, they already support that ERC-20 standard. Uh, and so to you know, add a new uh, token is as easy as you know, adding some configuration, contract address, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, we're we're using Door as a way to uh, get into those exchanges first, and then make it easier for the projects that follow, since that standard's already supported. Um, you know, we, we've also uh, added the support for Stargazer, um, DAG Explorer support. So there's, uh, you know, Transaction Explorer that would is ready for um, plug and play for any future uh, L0 token that launches. That's available for them uh, as well. And then just in general, sort of beyond uh, L0 token specifically, but, you know, ecosystem support, we're looking at um, making it easier for more metagraphs to launch. Uh, we'll have more uh, L0 tokens uh, available in the ecosystem and uh, unlock some of these um, ways for them to interact. So we're, we're doing that through uh, funding and liquidity support, launch pad and pools, um, and then direct developer support. Uh, through we have the public Discord, we have a partner uh, Discord, we have one-on-one -on -one conversations, and then also the grants programs. Um, and I guess what what are we doing with uh, protocol development to support L zero tokens uh, and and uh, eventually swaps? Uh, so in this kind of in this context, um, one of the major things that we're we're doing is a, a parallel effort uh, working on an isolated executor implementation through our work with the DoD. Um, and if, um, if you guys have followed the, the roadmap that we delivered earlier this year, um, this is one of the, the items on, uh, on that roadmap. Uh, it gives a first um, functional executor uh, within both the Metagraph and Hypergraph uh, that can then be, be used and expanded to um, ACI and the, the more generalized executor framework. Um, and so uh, this is one of those uh, those features that you won't see, uh, you know, little um, crumbs of on our public GitHub, uh, that um, this is all kind of being done private, uh, parallel paths with the private and the public projects. Um, but what we will see is um, sort of generalized versions of some of those features making their way back to the public uh, code bases and then being available for general use. So someone's, this is one that's in progress, but not really very visible uh, just yet. Um, and then sort of kind of within this larger context, you know, we, we want to support metagraphs in general and then support this token ecosystem. Um, and so swaps, of course, fit into that. I know uh, everyone uh, or most, most people are, are excited to hear more about how we plan to support swaps. Um, you know, we believe that the most impactful swaps uh, are going to be L0 token to L0 token swaps and L0 to DAG swaps to unlock the ability for liquidity to flow within the Constellation ecosystem. So Metagraph to Metagraph, uh, Metagraph to DAG, um, and then uh, uh, you know, from DAG, that liquidity can flow into um, other, um, into other uh, ecosystems through exchange integrations, bridges, wrapped tokens, et cetera, uh, based on, on DAG. So that's kind of our, our medium term goal. Uh, is to enable those internal token-to-token um, -token swaps. Um, so we can look a little bit at uh, what the path to those 
swaps look like from, uh, I don't want to get go too deep, but kind of a high level roadmap uh, level here. So um, the, the next um, major item we have coming up for protocol releases will be a snapshot fee mechanism. So this will be a, a fee uh, charged to uh, metagraphs for processing of their snapshots within the hypergraph. Um, this is going to be really essential to um, having a properly mature metagraph uh, system. Uh, there are some security uh, implications uh, around doing that that makes the network more secure, uh, and then also gives a way for kind of heavy users, uh, metagraphs that are doing a lot of processing, to pay a bit more for their uh, increased impact on, on the network. Um, so beyond that, we'll be um, doing some releases around the isolated execu executor implementation, um, which we talked about a little bit, uh, and then a, a hypergraph swap protocol. So this would be a, um, a native protocol uh, within the hypergraph that will allow for these L0 to L0 swaps and L0 to DAG swaps. Um, so it will be um, natively supported, um, and that allows us to uh, release that feature uh, kind of in the medium term. It doesn't have to depend on the larger uh, ACI uh, generalized executor system, uh, which is um, going to unlock a ton of stuff for us as well, including cross-chain swaps. Uh, but in the near term, uh, we're able to you know, support a DEX through uh, these native swaps. So um, really excited about that, uh, that particular strategy. I think it's going to unlock uh, the the most benefit as quickly as possible for this um, budding metagraph ecosystem, um, and uh, and really allow liquidity to flow uh, in the ways that would be most helpful. So, um, in terms of kind of the Dex itself and other integrations, uh, the the plan is for Lattice to work with a number of different partners to um, extend functionality uh, for the ecosystem as a whole. Um, so. Uh, you know the Dex would be one of those uh, one of those partners that is external, but we'll work with them closely. Uh, and then um, 3A DAO as well is uh, one of those as well that we'll be um, working with for um, a, a wrapped DAG token and some lending features uh, directly into Lattice. So maybe I can kick it over to to Ben for a kind of proper introduction. Yeah, that was great, Alex. Thank you so much for that update. Um... Michael, you're on the you're on the spot now, and I'm really excited to work with Michael. I've gotten the chance to to talk with him, work with him over the past month. He's got a great vision on really how we can leverage our network uh, in DeFi in ways that maybe we're not thinking about or uh, can't execute fast enough. Uh, this is one of the uh, first partners, actually. Um, that we've uh, given a grant to, we're building a bridge with from DAG uh, to Ethereum via Polygon. Um, and they're also using many of our products uh, uh, through this process. So it's been really fun to have this mind share with Michael as I, I think he's um, one, of, one of the leaders in the space uh, of thinking through DeFi and economics with having a strong background in economics, uh, it's really fun to to have these intellectual conversations and see how we can actually make things happen in kind of the near and far term. So, uh, but before we go into exactly where the partnership unfolds, um, I'm going to leave it over to uh, Michael to make an introduction on himself and 3A DAO. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's uh, it, it's great, uh, you know, being introduced to to your ecosystem and kind of in, embraced as uh, as part of the uh, the, the ecosystem. We we're super excited about that. Uh, let me start by introducing myself briefly. So my name is uh, Michael Bacha. I'm the co-founder of uh, 3A DAO. Uh, I'm I'm an economist. Uh, I've been in project finance. Uh, before crypto, and I've been in crypto since 2017, uh, mainly helping enterprises and crypto projects with token economics, uh, designing tokens, uh, analyzing tokens, uh, working on incentive structures, uh, working on loyalty rewards on the blockchain. Uh, but for example, I'm, I'm a Lufthansa Aviation Blockchain Challenge winner for designing a tokenized loyalty 
re rewards uh, system. Uh, and then uh, uh, I was uh, getting involved into DeFi um, more and more, let's say more and more uh, hands-on, uh, more and more involved in projects, uh, transitioning from consultant to, to a, a co-founder in a business. And, and you know, if, if anybody is an entrepreneur or, or a co-founder of, of a startup, you know that you either have a success or you have a learning experience. Uh, how I would call it, and and yeah, I I had a learning experience in DeFi where I was involved in a project that uh, uh, got uh, exploited, uh, and uh, this completely changed my uh, perception of DeFi and completely changed my attitude towards uh, building stuff on chain. So I, I realized that uh, we need to do things differently. And and if you can please flip to the next slide. Um, I, I really think that uh, the let's say the, the key purpose of 3 DAO right now is to build the uh, safest uh, DeFi protocol out there, and instead of chasing the yields, chase security and, and, and safety of, of of user funds. And uh, what 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 we are looking at is on the very very basic fundamental level making sure that we are a, on the leading edge of uh, innovation in terms of uh, cyber security in terms of blockchain security so we're using uh, the best in class enterprise grade uh, components uh, chainlink oracles one of the uh, partners that we're working with I'm extremely excited about this is it's called uh, hypernative and uh, these guys have a threat detection platform that is using AI to actually predict threats. So it's it's not only, oh, by the way, last block, there was a malicious transaction and now you're in trouble. It's uh, looking at the blockchain activity and detecting threats before they actually happen. And uh, the, 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 the way they, the, it happens is absolutely fascinating to me because the philosophy of uh, security on chain is completely different. Uh, in the Web3 paradigm, you are trying to limit the attack surface and control it as much as possible. Uh, in Web3, it's impossible. Uh, everything is on chain, all the data is on chain, so uh, every attacker has full visibility in, into what's happening uh, on chain. Uh, but in order to perform some sort of malicious activity, those attackers have to uh, perform certain actions that are also visible and in public. And uh, Hypernative is using this against it, against malicious actors. So this is why this preventive uh, detection and monitoring uh, is, is possible. Uh, and then, you know, we, we are going through a, a completely new rigorous uh, testing process where we are not only testing technical, uh, I would say, uh, correctness uh, of the smart contracts, but uh, we are also putting a lot of uh, effort on economic testing uh, of, uh, let's say, the user behavior and its uh, effect on, on uh, let's say, economic flows of, of the ecosystem. Uh, and we've also built the AAA with security in mind on the the smart contract level where uh, there are certain limits and certain, let's say, fail-safe me mechanisms that uh, help us put a uh, protocol on pause or, or prevent actions that uh, would potentially be harmful to, to our users. Uh, yeah, and let's say all, all of this comes from the fact that uh, the, the, the governance of the DAO is focused on security and we are also onboarding, uh, the, the, let's say, the best in the world specialist to, to help us with uh, security. For example, like Scott that, that is mentioned here and we, we announced it, announced him earlier this week. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, talking about the governance, uh, we are a very interesting uh, bunch because uh, as you can see on the slide, 75% of the DAO members are doxxed. Uh, so uh, we come from traditional uh, industries, traditional backgrounds like uh, myself and uh, Dahlia, who's uh, 
ex BlackRock fund manager, uh, and she's focusing on uh, risk management and compliance. And we also have uh, you know our, our CTO uh, Antonio, uh, who is a, a DeFi degen uh, and uh, a, a very big uh, security nerd. And we also have Krakow, who's a you know a Bitcoin maximalist who's warming up to DeFi uh, right now. So I really I really like uh, working with with all of them, and you know I'm also very proud of, of the rest of our team who. Uh, was able to to build an amazing product that uh, is really fun to use. Uh, but I, I think the overlap in our attitudes and in in, in our thinking about blockchain and uh, what it can do for the world, I, I, I think is great and uh, hopefully is going to create very good products for our users. So, okay, so we've talked enough about. Uh, who we are now, what we do. So uh, we have built a, a zero interest lending uh, protocol. Uh, and uh, yes, I, I want to reiterate, our lending protocol doesn't charge any recurring interest. Uh, and it's possible because uh, we are not using any external source of uh, capital. So users come to the, the protocol with their own assets and they lock assets in our protocol in their own smart contracts. And they are essentially borrowing uh, Euro3, our native stablecoin, from themselves. And this is why there's no need for paying any recurring interest uh, to, to, to capital uh, providers. Uh, so our protocol unlocks this uh, access to liquidity uh, without the need of uh, of, of selling tokens. Uh, yeah, can... I just want to, yeah. uh, Michael, maybe I'll I'll interject and say what what this is similar to, if I'm correct, is like uh, a portfolio, um, or I think it's called a PAL or a portfolio asset line of credit, um, where you're able to take your stocks and uh, line of credit against it. Or in America, we have something called a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, where yes. you take yes. your house and they underwrite your house and they give you, um, you know, yes. somewhere between 60 and 80% of the value of your house. And you can use it basically like a credit card. And if you default, well, you default on your house or your por portfolio stocks. That is absolutely correct. And I would say this this, this portfolio collateral is uh, very accurate because uh, you have to also pay attention to the value, current value of your collateral and make sure your loan is uh, over collateralized. Uh, and uh, uh, th that is a very good understanding. So again, the, the, the biggest problem that we see in crypto right now is access to liquidity. Uh, especially on chain and especially to uh, the projects or the tokens that are not not top 25 uh, coin market cap uh, and there is a very very limited access to the lending market uh, for majority of tokens and the selection of collateral is uh, very small in those currently existing uh, uh, lending platforms uh, Everybody's charging uh, high interest rates, and you know it's uh, obvious that uh, you know the DeFi summer was happening when uh, interest rates were at the historic lows, uh, zero percent. You know interest rates in Europe were negative, I think mi minus half a percent, right? Unprecedented, uh, and uh, yeah, it, DeFi offered yield opportunities uh, to, to, to people. It was very attractive, but now when people get interest-free, risk-free interest rates of you know, five to seven uh, percent on, on government treasuries, uh, now all, all the DeFi lending protocols have to charge even more right, to, to compensate for, for the risk. So it's really not uh, affordable uh, anymore. Uh, and the other option of uh, selling uh, part of your tokens to, to, to access liquidity, well, this triggers a taxable uh, event and also 
either dilutes your portfolio or you're basically giving up on the, the future growth potential of, of whatever you, you're holding. Yeah, so our solution is uh, using our completely decentralized non-custodial uh, lending protocol and using Euro3 as the medium of uh, transferring the, the liquidity. And you know, for, for the risk of sounding very nerdy, but this is the economist in me talking, uh, think about this whole mechanism as uh, you are uh, putting some assets that are digital on chain uh, into a vault that only you control. And this vault has this economic function of locking in the risk portion of your portfolio and releasing the risk-free stable part of the portfolio for, for you to use, and then you can use it as currency. So uh, Euro3 is non-custodial, it's decentralized, it's uh, always over-collateralized using only uh, on-chain assets, so it's not your standard uh, uh, stable coin that is backed by uh, fiat uh, bank deposits. Uh, I would say it's, uh, it has a totally different uh, characteristics because of that. So it's censorship resistant. Uh, you know, we probably all remember, I think it was back in in March or in May where uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, <laughs> went, went into bankruptcy and, and USDC <laughs> went down by what, 20%, I think, for, for a few hours, right? So, so yeah, the, the, the fiat backed, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, and even bank deposits that they have their own risks associated with, with custody of those assets. Uh, well, our, our protocol is completely non-custodial, so nobody is going to prevent you from accessing your revolt and uh, taking out your, your collateral as long as you're going to pay back the, the, the loan, right? And uh, uh, yes, thank you for that. It's It's a great segue to to mention that yes, we are starting with uh, the digital assets, so uh, cryptocurrencies and tokens. Uh, but we 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 see uh, the the future as um, bringing real world assets on chain. I think this is this is going to be the, the the main adoption vector for for blockchain for crypto over the next two years uh, the, the, during the next bull run. Uh, and we, we really think that uh, having uh, tokenized real-world assets on chain is great, but it's far more meaningful if there is liquidity associated with this. Because you know, if, if, if I hold my assets that are tokenized, but they are still illiquid and I cannot exchange them or, or use them for anything else, then uh, not without a lot of utility over there. And we... Uh, are positioning ourselves to be the liquidity provider for all tokenized real world assets. Uh, uh, and this is because we have a very uh, robust uh, data-driven risk model that can help us uh, accurately price those assets, associate the, the, uh, the risk uh, and uh, the, the decide what kind of assets, let's say, what are the amounts of assets that are allowed in the, our, our protocol and then price them accurately. And and I think this 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 whole real world asset narrative, I think this is very interesting for, uh, for, for your ecosystem because if we are talking about a lot of real world assets, it means a lot of data, right? So for every tokenized real world assets, we're going to need a price oracle. And it's pr probably not only going to be a price oracle, it's going to be an oracle that's going to reflect the state of the asset in the real world uh, somehow. Right? So uh, you're going to need a technology that uh, has uh, persistence uh, and high throughput and also is customizable in terms of uh, what are the permissions. Is it open public or is it semi uh, private or is it completely private? Right? And yet, probably everybody who wants to put their uh, assets on chain want this to be secured by some sort of a robust validation mechanism right? for, for all this to be trusted. So, so I don't know if you guys are thinking in, in those categories, but uh, I yeah. think definitely. 
Yeah, you know, um, I think it's an interesting point to, um, as I hear you talk through this, I, I think of a future where, you know, when, well, in the past, we talked about tokenizing our assets to make it, e you know, fractionalized ownership and stuff like that. And it, it was kind of hard to get behind. Um, I didn't see like that, that X factor that you would have. But if you look at traditional models and replacing that to a digitized model, you can easily look at say, going through a process of getting a home equity line of credit, you you have, um, in order to do that, a bank pushes so much paperwork through you, and they have to underwrite your risk to be able to pay back any sort of drawdown uh, against your home. So even though you have an asset, you still have to be underwritten for that risk. And so why I think, I personally think this is amazing is because not only are you tokenizing the asset, but you're using, uh, you're creating a lending protocol of which you could imagine a future where uh, a network like Constellation provides all these different data feeds, a data marketplace of all these different data feeds, your data feed, your identity, or um, for ways to under further underwrite your risk and allow mm -hmm. you to borrow against it. Um, and really evolve the entire product so that we go away from the traditional banking system of all the, you know, the paperwork and signatures, and you've got all your digital assets. Uh, and you're able to, you, you know, you're, you have access to all this and you have all your data online and you're able to give permissions to do the underwriting and receive that, that, that loan against those assets. Um, and I think this is really valuable because if you look at the traditional banking, they don't consider digital assets a part of your um, your your uh, your wealth profile or asset profile. Um, so when you start bringing all these things together and you bring in data, you're starting to create uh, a more programmatic way of lending that replaces the antiquated processes of the banking system. And to me, that to me is more of the X factor, replacing kind of old school ways of doing something that take 60 to 90 days and being able to do that in a few hours. So yeah, absolutely, we are thinking about that. Yeah. Just want to do a time check on you, Michael. We got about, uh, about 10 minutes or so. Okay, let me <laughs> rush yeah, we'll, we'll get through it, don't worry. If we run over a little yes. bit, it's okay. Okay, so uh, to, to make it a bit more tangible for everybody, the, the protocol has two native tokens, Euro3, which is a payment coin that is backed by all those uh, on-chain assets used as collateral, and it's pegged to the Euro. And also we have our native utility token, A3A. Uh, and uh, it's used to make sure that all the protocol fees are collected and distributed back to the token holders, basically our DAO members. So we're a non-profit DAO. We are registered in the Marshall Islands as a non-profit uh, LLC. We, we, we cannot make uh, any profits. And all the revenue generated by the protocol that we, we, we've built uh, are channeled back to token holders. So people who stake A3 tokens in our protocol uh, collect cashbacks from from uh, all those fees. And also there will be uh, there is an ability to participate in go our, our governance. Uh, so far we have uh, had several rounds uh, of, of of votes uh, that are uh, I would say the participation was quite high. I'm very happy about this. And to say the, the, the best thing about A3A is that all those cashbacks that the users collect, they can be used to uh, uh, repay your loans uh, automatically. And, you know, I tested it in our app, and this is a completely magical feeling where you click on the app, you have, let's say, 500 euro worth of loan, and you click a button and, you know, 20 of this <laughs> of this balance disappears because you have harvested your cashback. Like, you imagine getting a letter from your bank saying, hey, we have an extra $50 for you. Do you want to apply it to your credit card and erase some of, some of this balance? Yeah. And, uh, okay, let's... Uh, Let's keep going. So I, I, I guess uh, over to you. What's, what's, what's the vision or, or, or bright future? 
<laughs> Beyond what I already said, I think I kind of yeah. gave away a, a little bit of the clue. So it, um, so obviously meeting Michael is nothing short of a, a missing piece in our ecosystem that that we kind of set out the intention last year of finding more partners to help us kind of uh, accelerate kind of the uh, DeFi aspect and leverage our technology in meaningful ways. And um, so, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we awarded a grant uh, to 3A DAO, um, the first uh, of probably a few grants to come uh, as we keep talking here. <laughs> um, and really the first the first thing that we can get started on is building a bridge from Hypergraph to Ethereum to unlock more liquidity uh, into the Constellation ecosystem. Uh, this has been really on our radar for a little while and it's been just finding the right person the right team that has that emphasis on security uh, and their excitement uh, of what they can do with uh, with our ecosystem. And uh, I think it's really important that they have their own product and their, their own vision. Um, and how do we kind of blend all these things together versus just working with another dev shop? So this is, uh, is excited. And I'm very honored to be able to offer this grant uh, to Michael and his team. I, I think this is uh, the first step into a, a really big partnership that I see over the next several years. Um, but starting with swapping, um, you know, I, it's it's very simple in the in the, in the sense that this is the first thing that we can get we can bite our teeth into in the near future. Um, so, you know, in, in this diagram, uh, the team mocked up what a scenario would look like in wrapping DAG. Uh, in creating sort of incentive structure around stake or staking the Euro three and the <laughs> stability pool with yield opportunities. Um, and then you, a, A3A stakers are then incentivized to actively use the platform uh, it, with the cashbacks. So you see this kind of very simple interface that will live on, on Lattice or live uh, directly in the Stargazer wallet uh, and make it very easy for people to go into the ETH Ethereum ecosystem and back. So anything you want to highlight well, on that, Michael? Yes. So it's, it's not just going to the Ethereum ecosystem just for the fun of it. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be fun, but it's it's also about using DAG, in, in this case, wrapped DAG version on Ethereum as, as collateral. Right? So it, again, this is the idea of uh, enabling DAG holders access the liquidity of their assets without without selling them. Uh, so which could be very uh, which could play really nicely in how a lot of node operators have uh, a lot of locked up collateral within their nodes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if, if you uh, use your stake DAG uh, and uh, use it as collateral and you can access capital at zero recurring interest, uh, this is an opportunity for extra leverage at very, very low uh, capital costs. And ultimately, all of this is going to translate into more uh, DAG uh, stake, uh, more security, more nodes. Right, for, for the whole ecosystem. So. Yes, and yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to uh, being, uh, let's say, having 3A protocol integrated uh, into all the existing uh, user-facing apps uh, in the Constellation ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's say all, all of this is... Uh, of a very nice roadmap that we talked about. And right here, right now, uh, we already have a first uh, actionable item uh, on the list. So we are offering uh, A3A token rewards to all the Constellation users who is, are going to provide liquidity to our Euro3 to uh, USDC pool. Uh, and uh, you go on to Lattice, and on Lattice you can uh, deposit your uh, LP tokens and start earning rewards. And yeah, if you're gonna scan this uh, QR code, there is an explainer on how to do that. Uh, and yeah, so everybody can go and stake uh, the the liquidity, start earning rewards. And for a limited time only, if you can. Maybe please go back one one or two slides, two slides up. Yeah, one, one more. So 
uh, uh, one down, please. So, Sorry. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So uh, we are uh, expanding our uh, user base very cautiously. We are targeting the select selected communities. So normally, access to the lending part of the protocol is uh, is restricted. But for 48 hours, uh, starting right about now, uh, all the Constellation users can uh, whitelist their wallets on a protocol and actually test it. So you see how it works, test the, 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 the lending, uh, test how the staking works, uh, staking the A3 tokens, see how the cashbacks work. So yeah, that's... Uh, Excellent. So let me let me summarize. So I know we, my, Michael, uh, kindly sped sped up a little there. Um, so in summary, uh, 3A DAO has uh, received a grant from Constellation to build out uh, a bridge into Ethereum via Polygon and leverage Wrap DAG as collateral. Uh, getting started today, you're able to support their liquidity pool on Lattice Gateway. Um, and rewards are coming out of that and will be kind of determined uh, dynamically as uh, as the uh, demand comes through. Um, number three, you are able to connect your wallet. Uh, you're whitelisted to connect your wallet on 3A DAO's uh, platform by going to clicking on this um, and actually receive kind of first served treatment and test it out. We've already tested out internally as a company. It's a pretty great user experience. Uh, the explainer guide is available. We'll provide all those links to the community. Um, so um, find them on, on the liquidity pool. Uh, check out their platform. I really think they this is, if I were to start, you know, if I were to start looking at um, kind of the next bull run, I'm looking at the next DeFi applications and how, um, you know, in many ways, we we miss the DeFi V1 uh, train, and we've had our eye on V2. Uh, and I think this is actually very reflective of, of Michael's career, if you don't mind me saying this, and uh, everything that happened with his first iteration, and how do you make adjustments and provide the right support for V2. Uh, and this is a lot of, of what's coming down the lines for V2 and DeFi. This is, there's going to be much more substantial use cases around collateralizing various assets, finding groups that are thinking through, you know, several years from now, not just a quick buck and chasing yields, as Michael said, but actually thinking through, you know, security, custodianship, what, you know, what are other communities that we can actually tap into just versus just one community. Um, and I think that's the power of a lot of what they're doing with more security at the core and, uh, and accountability. Um, so I'm very excited about this. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's been a long time coming and making this happen with Michael and his team. And uh, to give everybody an idea of where we are on the roadmap with the swaps that Alex talked about uh, right now, uh, 3A DAO and ourselves, we're going through um, a little research uh, stage and um, early into next year, we'll have a more concrete launch date around when that swap uh, swap will happen. So um, this is in the near future. This isn't something that's like far out. Um, and then there's easy ways to get involved with, with 3A DAO today, start playing around with it. I highly encourage everybody um, to take a look at it because it's going to be a part of our ecosystem and really embedded into the Lattice Gateway in a meaningful way that I think will start to put us um, on a really good track for a good 2024. Uh, so to kind of recap today, Michael, was that, was that okay? Was that a good summary for you? That was a great summary. Yes. <laughs> That's going to be a great year, 2024. Going to be a great year. I'm excited. Uh, you know, Michael and I and Alex were all kind of riffing before this on uh, on even more opportunities and things that we can do with metagraphs and oracles. And so there's a lot that that that's at play here. Um, and I love Michael's ex expansive thinking. It's it's very rare in the space uh, to have that kind of collaboration. And it's you know, as many as you of you know, I take partnerships very seriously. Um, I don't just uh, make anybody a partner. It has to come in through a meaningful way.
So thanks, Michael and, and the 3A DAO team. Uh, really excited about seeing your guys' success and congrats on your on your launch uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. It's been it's been really great to see this unfold. So actually a big session. Stay with me for a couple minutes. Um, just a quick summary. Metagrass are live. So uh, starting with Door, uh, we've really kind of been working out uh, stability, kind of all any other bugs that have shown up, just making sure the network's going. And we're going to start looking at uh, bringing on more developers here in, in the near term as well. Uh, so, you know, maybe some of you are, are starting to see that, that there, there's more activity, we're getting more projects, we're getting more companies come in with great sophistication like Michael's team. Um, but, you know, we're excited that Met Metagrass are live. They happened to, this year in 2023. Uh, 3A DAO partnership, as we went through uh, just a second ago, pools are live, go to Lattice Gateway, check it out. Um, we're in the near, we're, we're We've already been in the R&D stage of the DAG and Ethereum bridge, as you can see from some of the visualizations. Um, and then um, what's up next? So uh, as many of you know, every year I do some sort of year end summary. Uh, we're we're kind of getting that together. It's going to probably take me a few weeks to put all the pieces together from this year, from you know, launching frameworks, metagraphs, new partnerships, contracts with the DOD. There's so many things there. Um, something new that I'm going to talk about, which is our uh, our formal enterprise advisory board that will will catapult us into 2024, um, and then we'll be doing a a protocol update in early January. So give everybody a little holiday break uh, from crypto, and uh, then hit it hit it hard with a solid protocol update um, from the entire team uh, coming in in early January. Um, and then also to note, uh, we're going to start opening up more node operator spots uh, for the hypergraph. That'll happen in December. Um, and we have a new launchpad listing that's coming in the next couple of months from a group in our ecosystem, uh, Obius, which the governance vote went through on the lattice governance vote went through unanimously that Obius will be um, featured on the lattice launchpad. And they've already been doing a lot of development a lot of development on their metagraph, uh, and we're just going to make sure the timing's right and really help and support them. So long hypergraph hour. We went over five minutes. Um, I really appreciate it. this is good. So this isn't the last time you'll hear from us this year. We've got some more stuff and uh, a year end summary, but um, yeah, so really excited about this. Please go support uh, uh, 3A DAO. Um, they're going to be a close partnership. That's really why I wanted to explore this is because they didn't just want to be on lattice pools or a launch pad. They wanted to actually really dig into the tech, uh, build a metagraph with us uh, and something that was really meaningful for our ecosystem and that we thought was uh, different than many of the other metagraphs. So thank you all for the time today. And uh, what is it, Wednesday? God, it feels like the weekend. So <laughs> Uh, have a great day, everybody. Any any closing remarks from anybody else? I'll, I'll just say I just got word from the team uh, on Lattice that uh, the pool is live, so you can go to lattice.is slash pools, uh, check out the new 3, 3A DAO uh, pool, and then if you connect your wallet, um, you'll get redirected to that uh, the whitelisting link that uh, was on the QR code if you missed that earlier. So, uh, but yeah, it, awesome updates. Um, excited to take this into 2024. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. Yeah. Great job, Michael. Bye. Good job, guys. Bye -bye.